This tutorial will cover how to access the free screen recording software built in most Apple Macintosh computers. The purpose behind presenting this software ability is so fellow visual artists can have the knowledge and skills to be able to create screen recording time lapses of their 3D works or to make a tutorial themselves. All of the programs, copyrights, images, backgrounds, and any other components owned by companies and organizations seen in this tutorial are not owned by Sawhorse Pictures. Therefore, Apple and Text2Speech.org own all of the following rights to their products. This tutorial was only created to inform and teach for educational purposes. While watching this video remember to subscribe, like favorite, video response, and add as friends to Sawhorse Pictures, so that you, the viewer, will get up to date notification about when other great 3D models or tutorials are uploaded. Thank you in advance. Now let's begin with the tutorial. The first step to access the screen recording software is to move your cursor, the mouse pointer, up to Spotlight, the icon in the top right hand corner that looks like a magnifying glass, and click on it. After the Spotlight icon has been clicked, a menu that states the word Spotlight and a white oval search bar will appear in the blue selected box. I took a screen capture of the box and the next few steps so that the details of the spotlight menu can be seen easier. Once the selected blue box with the word spotlight and the oval search bar appear on your screen, move your cursor to the oval search bar and click on it. A flashing typing cursor should now appear in the oval search bar. Now type the word QuickTime into the oval search bar. The selected blue box with the word spotlight and the oval search bar should now transform into a long box filled with different computer files and programs. When this happens, scroll down with your cursor to where the text says QuickTime Player and select it by clicking on the text. Once QuickTime Player is chosen, then the QuickTime logo will appear bouncing up and down in your dock. The QuickTime Player logo should look like a silver and white colored cube with the middle of the round part of the cube filled with blue. I magnified the QuickTime Player logo in my dock to help show the logo better. When you put your cursor over the QuickTime Player icon in the dock, the name QuickTime Player should appear in a transparent black oval over the QuickTime Player logo. Before the next phase of the tutorial can continue QuickTime Player must fully load. QuickTime Pro is not necessary for this tutorial. QuickTime Player will stop bouncing in the dock when it has fully finished loading. When fully loaded, move your cursor up to File in the top left hand corner of the computer screen. After moving your cursor up to File, select File by clicking it with your cursor. The word file will become highlighted in blue and the name file with turn white. A menu will also appear below file dot. In the file menu, the menu below the word file choose the option to start a new screen recording dot. The hotkeys caret, command, and the letter N when pressed at once will also activate a new screen recording. A black transparent box, like the one seen in the screenshot, will appear on the desktop when either the new screen recording option on the menu is pressed or the hotkeys are pressed. This black box is where the user you set up the settings that the screen recording will have. The buttons from left to right are close minimize, maximize recording and more options. The close button closes the black box and cancels the screen recording. Minimize the yellow button will put the black box down into the QuickTime Player logo, hiding the black box. Maximizes the ability of the green button. Making the screen recording black box longer is what Maximize does to the black box. Starting the recording is the function that the white circle with the red dot does. The white triangle, when pressed, creates more options for the screen recording. Finally, in the bottom right-hand corner of the black transparent box, there is a button that looks like a diagonal line with a dot under it. 
The button that looks like a diagonal line with a dot under it allows the user to expand both in the horizontal and vertical and contrast the size of the black transparent box to a greater or smaller size. Now let's go back to the triangular button to further investigate what that button offers extra to the users. Click on the triangular button. A menu screen should appear below the bottom point of the triangular button. This menu offers the ability to change the microphone settings quality the video will be recorded in and where the screen recording will be saved to once the user tells QuickTime Player to stop recording. Let's pause here for a moment and go over exactly what each option does. Under the microphone, there are three options. These options are none, built-in input, line-in and built-in microphone, internal microphone. The option none tells QuickTime Player to not record audio with the screen recording. Next, the built-in input option if checked tells QuickTime Player to allow an external microphone that is hooked up to the computer by USB or another way to be the source of taking in sound for the screen recording. This option is used when the user uses a head or handheld microphone. Lastly, in the microphone options is the choice built-in microphone. Internal microphone. Using built-in microphone. Internal microphone activates the built-in microphone that most Apple Macintosh computers come with. Choice of video quality is the next important decision that the screen recording user must make. The selection of quality's choices will determine how good the quality of the final screen recording video will turn out once the user tells QuickTime Player to stop recording. There are only two different options for quality, medium and high. The first one is medium. Medium sets the quality of the screen recording video to a low, less colored video. The file size of the final screen recording will also be smaller due to the lack of memory being processed and used to record that would normally be used in the high quality option. Therefore by choosing the high option for video quality, the final result of the finished screen recording will be brighter in colors as well as have a noticeable amount of space used on the computer. Taking the computer that will be using QuickTime Player's screen recording option into consideration is the best form of choosing which quality option to select. Lastly, in the triangular buttons menu is the category of Save to. The Save to category is the area of QuickTime Player's screen recording ability that tells the computer where to save the screen recording. More than likely by default, the computer selected the user's desktop to be the saving point. However, by clicking Choose underneath Desktop, and the last option on the menu will open up a box that will allow the user to select any area on the computer as the destination for the finished screen recording. When all three main categories have the selected options, selecting the triangular button or the black transparent box will cause the triangular button's menu to disappear. With this knowledge, we can now tell QuickTime Player to begin the screen recording. To tell QuickTime Player to start the screen recording with your pointer click on the white circle that has a red dot. Once the white circle with the red dot has been clicked, a notification window will appear over the black transparent screen recording box. This notification window will ask if the user wants to begin the uh, screen recording along with how to stop the screen recording once the user is finished recording his or her movie. Also on the notification window, there are three buttons. These buttons are, from top to bottom, show me cancel and start recording. The top button, the show me button, will show when clicked the user where on the screen, the user must press to tell QuickTime Player to stop the screen recording. This screenshot presents the location of where the show me button will tell you, the user, where to press when finished with the screen recording. The stop button in the screenshot looks like a white circle with a black square within the circle. Alongside the white circle with a black square in it, there will be the word stop recording to the right of the white circle with the black square within the circle. 
This stop button is located towards the top middle right of the computer screen. The red arrow is pointing to where the screen recording stop button will be located once the screen recording stops. There is also a hotkey to stop the screen recording. The hotkey to stop the screen recording when all of the buttons are pressed at once are command control and escape. The next button on the screen recording notification window is cancel. Pressing on the cancel button informs QuickTime player to not start the screen recording. If the cancelled button is clicked, the screen recording notification window will disappear and the black transparent box will reveal itself. The third button on the screen recording notification window is the start recording button. By pressing the start recording button, QuickTime player will start processing and recording the user's screen. Both the black transparent box and the screen recording notification window will disappear. Only your computer screens and programs, if open, will be showing. When this happens, give QuickTime player a few seconds to start recording your screen, then you, the user, may begin your screen recording movie. Waiting a few seconds before starting a screen recording is only recommended so that if there is a glitch or the computer is acting slow, QuickTime player can have a few seconds to catch up. Also if you, the user, starts doing a movie with the screen recording right away without waiting for a few seconds, some of the start of your movie may not get recorded because QuickTime player had not begun the screen recording. Therefore once the start recording button has been pressed in the screen recording notification window and the user has waited a few seconds for QuickTime player to start recording whatever the purpose of the screen recording the user had may begin. Once again your finished screen recording will be saved to wherever the user told QuickTime player to save to when the user was under the triangular buttons save to option. You can see here that I had the screen recording saved to my desktop by the icon that QuickTime player created on my desktop. Also, when the user is finished with the screen recording, go up to the top middle right of the computer screen 